Is Cameron Highlands safe? During this uh, pandemic season, Malaysia promotes on domestic tourism. And one of the tourist place is Cameron Highlands. We all know that Cameron Highlands is uh, famous for its cool and comfy weather and having tea and strawberries are a must each time we go there. But Cameron Island is also famous for its landslides. Uh, within the past couple of months, cases of landslides was reported which took place at six different locations in Cameron Islands. What did they have in common? So according to the officers on duty, heavy rain occurred in the time of events. Uh, you might think that we need to remove the soil uh, and build retaining structure. Well, you are right. However, as uh, heavy rainfall occur in future, more slopes will fail and the process will continuously repeat unless the root cause of this problem is addressed. This is where I come in. Assalamualaikum, uh, my name is Muhammad Danish and today I will present about a preliminary study on shallow failure of residual soil at Cameron Islands. We need to look at ways to avoid landslides from happening, which were the results of the reducing strength of residual soil in case of heavy rainfall. We need to study the property of soil that exhibits this behavior. The triggering factor of this rainfall induced landslide was the infiltration of rainwater runoff. I study the characteristics of the soil by collecting soil samples at a slope where previously landslide had occurred. I analyzed their moisture content and also their particle soil distribution. And lastly, I uh, evaluate the results by comparing with existing model. So uh, the methodology was divided into four stages. The first stage was collecting soil samples. Uh, about a month ago, I took uh, samples from a site located at Kampung Raja uh, between the route from Simpang Pulai to Cameron Highlands. So I dug about uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 meter deep to collect the residual soil and place them in plastics. The next stage was labeling sample details. So uh, for each samples I collected, I measured the weight using an electronic balance and labeled them according to number sequence, weight, date, and time. I also measured uh, the surrounding temperature and coordinates for each samples using uh, Google Maps and a weather application on my smartphone. So the samples inside those plastics were placed inside a polystyrene box to be transported to the lab. Uh, the third stage was uh, analyzing moisture content using oven dry method. Uh, I followed the British standard for this. So first, I prepared the containers. I labeled them and weighted separately. Uh, I placed soil samples into the containers and weighted each of them. Uh, all these containers were placed inside an oven and set at uh, 105 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Then the samples and containers were weighted again. I take uh, sample 1 for example uh, using this formula. The moisture content obtained was 
The last stage was analyzing the particle soil distribution, PSD. Again, uh, I followed the British standard. I placed the soil samples onto trays and remove roots and grass from the soil samples. I then placed the samples uh, into an oven and set at 105 degrees Celsius again uh, for the samples to be oven dried. So after 24 hours, uh, I placed the samples into sieves. So this sieves uh, was tagged by placing the bigger size on top and the smaller ones uh, bottom. So when the shaker was turned on uh, and the soil was shaken for about uh, 15 minutes, uh, the soil would be separated properly by having bigger size uh, retained on top while the smaller size will pass through until bottom. I then measured the weight of each soil uh, on each sieve and used the result to plot the PSD graph. So uh, the results was uh, obtained as follows. Uh, so uh, I compare my uh, PSD results uh, with the PSD done by B. A. Hadi on 2017. Uh, as you can see, uh, the results I obtained was almost similar with the results uh, of B.A. Hadi. So this show that uh, the soil have similar distribution, hence uh, having the same characteristics. So based on the moisture content analysis, uh, this figures uh, was obtained. Again, uh, I verified the result. Uh, with an existing model of soil water characteristic curve for granitic residue soil uh, grade 6 by B. A. Hadi in 2017. Uh, to simply explain the graph, uh, the strength of soil increased as the water content increased until it reached a maximum strength, where in this case, when water content is 24.2%. So adding uh, more water into the soil uh, will cause the soil to lose its strength. Uh, based on my findings, uh, the lowest moisture content uh, of the soil I obtained obtain was 24.82%, uh, which already exceeded the maximum amount of water content for maximum soil strength. So that means uh, the soil was actually getting weaker. So a month ago, uh, I was actually standing on a slope which actually had risk for landslide. Uh, in the end, uh, I came to a conclusion uh, that I was able to gather soil samples uh, on an area where previously landslide had occurred. I also managed to analyze the moisture content uh, and its particle size distribution. And finally, I can conclude that the granitic soil at the slope side uh, holds risk for failure. And in future, uh, it is advised to use proper tools and equipment to collect the soil samples for more accuracy and precise. So I would also like to highlight uh, that study on soil shear strength is very, very, very crucial nowadays. Uh, with landslide cases keep happening uh, around the world, uh, especially in a tourist attraction spot like Cameron Islands, uh, I'm sure we all have uh, a bit of insecurity uh, the next time we'll be having a vacation there. So my advice, avoid going there on rainy season. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, that's all from me. Uh, if there are any comments or questions or any suggestions that you would like to add, uh, do not hesitate on contacting me through my email or my WhatsApp. So thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum.